fellow camera enthusiasts, I've got a real treat for you today. I recently won an auction for a job lot of standard eight cameras. No one was bidding for it. And so I thought, all right, I'll punt 20 quid. And what do you know, I won the auction. Of course, this wasn't eBay, so I had to pay auctioneering fees and transportation and everything. So when I got done, I ended up spending about 60 pounds. And for that money, I think I got a pretty good deal. So let's go through my new camera hoard of standard eight cameras or double eight cameras or regular eight, however you want to call it. So first up, we have this. It's in a rather nice leather case, as most of these cameras are. It's called a Umig C3. It's got the old lens turret. You lift it up, here's, here's the wide angle lens. Here's the telephoto lens. And that's the uh, half and half. When you look through the viewfinder, you actually look out through this thing here, not through the lens itself, which is another common feature of these cameras. So of course it has a wind up motor, a bit stiff, but it does work. There's a footage counter, there's a frame rate here, 16, 24, and 32. 16, 24, 32 frames a second. Now notice this little thing up here, but that goes around when you when the motor turns. That also means that you could put an electric motor onto this thing. You can even do it one frame at a time with a stepper motor. Over here is your aperture, your uh, manual aperture. On the other side, this little knob here is our focus. And you can see a little, someone has uh, handwritten in the numbers on the focus dial on all of these. Open it up and there's our standard eight film compartment here. Film goes in this reel, goes all the way round and then gets taken up on this thing here. And the thing works. So that's the Umix C3. It's quite a nice camera. And let's get on to the next one. So next, well, what in the name of all that is holy is in this? My goodness me. God, it's heavy. It's a Bell and Howell Viceroy. Look at that. What a beauty. What an old clunky double eight camera this is. When I tell you this thing is heavy, you can take that to the bank. But of course, being heavy means it's uh, also very solid and still works. Let's wind it up. Wind it up a bit. And over here is the shutter. And you push that lever down to run and push it up for single frame. The viewfinder that's looking down the lens here is for focusing and setting your f-stop. And then after you rotate the turret, so that lens is over the film gate, and then you use the other viewfinder to frame your image. And it's got these little lenses here, which are, these are the ones which go to the viewfinder. So although it's this lens where the light's coming through to go onto the film, to line the shot up, you look through this one. And as you can see, these are all different sizes. There's a smaller one, and there's another one there. It's got a footage counter, it's got a uh, speed dial, the lenses themselves have got focus and aperture, and it's got this rather complicated conversion chart here where you can work out what kind of aperture you should be using. It's got sunny, cloudy, nice little uh, information wheel there. If I open it up, there we go. Beautiful. Just enough space there. Nice little camera, and it works. So that's the Bell and Howell Viceroy. All right, now on to the next. Well, next we have, in this interestingly shaped box that says Chinon on it. Of course, it's a Chinon camera with its own instruction booklet, extra bonus, a Chinon Zoom 8. 
This was made in 1963, which means it was released only two years before Super 8 came in. And it's uh, really a more modern double eight, standard eight camera, in that it takes four double A batteries. And on the other side has a sliding compartment. There you go, and that's for our roll of double eight film. So it has a focus and a zoom, and this rather natty Chinon lens cap, which is likely to get lost eventually. Electric motor, it's very heavy, it's metal. It's got an automatic iris with a selenium cell, doesn't need batteries. Here's a thing saying whether you're, uh, we're seeing whether the exposure is too high or too low. So the light meter light comes in through this bit here, this window here, it's not through the lens. And if I cover it, you might be able to see the needle adjusting itself. Here is the ASA setting. Unfortunately, it only goes from 10 to 40. So with your faster stocks, you're a little bit screwed. It's got a nice action, very nice action. Zoom and focus on the same lens here. It's got a removable handle, so you can mount it on a tripod. And so uh, that's the Chinon Zoom 8. I don't know. Not getting too excited about the Chinon, mainly because it's such a late model standard 8 camera that Super 8 was coming in two years after this. So it's got some features. It's got stuff like a zoom lens and battery power, which the Super 8 had more. So that's the Chinon Zoom 8. <laughs> Before I come up with the uh, prize specimen of the whole auction, there's this little Sima, Kima, Kima, Kima D8. Let's get it out of this thing. Jesus fucking Christ, will you not come out? Okay, so here it comes out of its case. It's got that kind of like oatmeal and metal color scheme. It's got this little lens. Yeah. It's actually got a removable lens, this one. Looks like a D mount, 12.5 millimeter lens. It looks like a fixed focus lens because all it seems to have on the side are uh, f stops. So I can turn this around. Eh? The lens doesn't focus, it just has aperture setting. If you want to work out whether your uh, subject is in focus or not, you go to this thing on the side which tells you at a certain f stop how close you can get from your subject. So here in uh, on F16, you can get three feet away. Um, on F11, you get four feet away. At fully wide open, you can't get any closer than nine feet. The problem with this camera, yeah, it's, it's wound all the way up, I can feel it, but hitting the shutter does nothing. So it's got a wound up spring and uh, won't actually run. So this is our first duff camera of the day, um, but it's got these four big ass flat screws are here, so I could actually try and take it apart and get it to work, hopefully. And finally, we have this, nothing short of absolutely magnificent, Soviet made quartz zoom double eight camera. It is apparently the first ever Soviet made standard eight camera to have a zoom lens. They certainly don't make lens caps like this anymore. Look at that, it looks like if you look into it while it goes around, you could get hypnotized. There we go. So you focus here, zoom with the lever. And over here on the other side, there's our aperture control, with this funny looking lever here. Inside this, of course, is our film compartment. This thing comes right off. Like that. Beautiful, look at that. And it does work. I have footage here to show you.
fucking lovely. And not only that, but it has a feature which basically no Super 8 camera had until some very, very high end ones. And that is, it has a backwinder facility. So we wind it up. Do some shooting. Then with this little knob here, you turn it from on to off. And with this little handle in here, you put that in and boom, you can back wind it. When we're ready to shoot again, you turn this back on and shoot again. So this camera will enable you to do double exposures and to do cross dissolves. Here's our ASA settings. It has a light meter in it as well. Yeah, selenium cell. It has our frames per second going from 12 to 48, a decent range. Um, here you can have continuous run or normal running or S, which I believe is single frame. Here's our film counter. Down it goes, see, ticking away. The handle even comes off or comes on, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> Maybe it's a glass half empty, half full thing. So you can actually just shoot it with uh, with one of these. It's very Soviet and like a lot of the Soviet stuff, it's built like a tank and still works. No examination of cameras is complete without a wild card. And our wild card is something very interesting. I actually found it by accident in a bag of accessories that came with these standard eight cameras. And it's this little thing here. It's not a standard eight camera, it's a super eight camera. And it is absolutely tiny. It's the Agfa Microflex 200. In fact, when it came out, it was the smallest Super 8 camera made. I think I might make a separate film just for this one because uh, it's an interesting camera, ultra slim. So this doesn't really fit in the standard eight, but it came with all the others. What a cool little mini camera. So there we have it, instant camera collection. 60 pounds for six cameras, 10 quid each. I'm um, very, very happy with this. I'd say my favorite one of all of these, it's gotta be the Quartz Zoom Soviet one, followed by um, probably the UMIG and the Bell & Howell Tide. That's out of the running because it's a Super 8, but I like it anyway. The Chinon, can't warm to it, but it works. The Sema would like it better if it worked, which it doesn't but I've got a lot of fun here. The lesson learned today is if you see an auction that no one has bid for, and it's for a whole bunch of stuff, throw in a bid, you never know, you might win it. So that's all for me today. I'll be continuing my standard eight story with a couple of other cameras. I haven't even got onto the Bolex yet. Oh, Bolex, I've said too much already. Okay, enjoy, go out and get some yourself, but not if I'm bidding on them. Bye.